Hello and welcome to another Arch and XP webinar. My name is Zoltan Toth. Over here is, as always, our resident architect, Mr. Idris Hi there. Today's topic is stairs and railings and how we make them happen. So, lots to do. Let's take a look. We have quite a few examples for you today to illustrate how we can create stairs and railings and we are going to go beyond the basics and we are going to show you how exactly things are coming together. Uh, in a couple of words, what exactly are we going to see today, Dish? Well, uh, first things first, we are trying to um, have a very simple example about the ergonomy of the stairs, how mm -hmm. to design the stairs, how they build up and how they behave when you create one and how to um, look at the uh, ergonomic standards and how to control them and then when we when we uh, are finalized that we were also going to special directions to be able to uh, demonstrate to you how you can create custom stairs now the arch line uh, hosts a, a great library of the stairs that you can just uh, pick and use uh, for your uh, convenience but also there might be some situations when you actually uh, work on a DWG file or with a very, very, mm -hmm. very specific uh, um, stair shape. And in that case, it will be handy to know how to how to turn an existing uh, 2D shape into a stair uh, easily. This is also yes. what we will discuss. We will also talk about the spiral stairs, which is also a kind of uh, specific uh, demo uh, representation of a staircase. And also we will uh, talk about the rules that make the, the staircase different on several um, floors when you design a multi-floor uh, building, just as we have it here in, right. on, on screen. And then at the end, we will also talk about from the from the half time, we will talk about the railings or the railing system, the powerful railing engine in the in the software. And we will discuss how that al allows you to create flexible and parametric parametric uh, staircase uh, accessories or standalone uh, rail uh, railings uh, around in your mm -hmm. design should it be an external railing or an internal part of the of the design so this is pretty much uh, the what beginning what we will this. what we will start with uh, we will also have another project but uh, now i will just load an empty version of this one and we will yes. discuss how to create this uh, while you do i just uh, let me remind you that uh, during the show you can ask your <coughs> questions on the right hand side next to the in the chat bar next to me and if you have anything we are going to answer them either as we go along yeah. as or at the end uh, in a separate block. So yeah, the first thing... Ask your yes, questions there. That's right. So the first <coughs> thing we have to figure out is the basics of creating a very simple staircase. So yep. the most important question is, how do we get started? What are the things that we should do? <coughs> uh, well, let's start first with one of the uh, simplest uh, designs when you have a, uh, a stairwell, uh, a building part where mm -hmm. you would like to create all the staircases that you uh, are willing to design. Well, for that we have this part of this design and we also have this uh, saved uh, view of this uh, internal um, perspective, this this one here. So it, now the camera, as you can see it in the 2D uh, floor plan uh, points from this direction to this one. So I will design a staircase first here. And um, well, all the stair tools um, and also the railing tools are in the building part. So uh, this tool is uh, is it is something that we will use for internal st interior uh, staircases and also for exterior staircases. So there's no difference. The the basic rules how you define a stair is the, is very same uh, similar. I mean very simpler. Uh, you either choose a straight U form, an L form, or, or a spiral. These are the mm -hmm. kind of library uh, stock items that you can uh, go with, or you go with any any of the other tools that allows you to design the staircase uh, kind of step by step. We will also uh, uh, <coughs> cover this part here. But let's first start with a very simple sta straight staircase. When you uh, pick up a shape and you uh, pick up one point of your design and another point of the design and mm -hmm. then the software creates a staircase. And this is okay <coughs> until you don't have any specific form or a, or a more complex shape like a winded uh, um, staircase with, yes. with a U shape. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's very straightforward. It is just like drawing a, a wall. You pick two points, the software generates the stair, and then you can customize the staircase. But before I start customizing the staircase, let's just design another uh, stair shape. And in this case, we actually need a U shape uh, staircase here. So I will mm -hmm. select one from this one. And as you can see, there are different uh, st 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 kind of uh, shapes with landings and with separated landings and so on. And now I've been 
I'm willing to use this one, the, the, the fourth uh, type. So I will just simply pick the starting point. And as you can see, <coughs> you can either type the length, or just as in case of a wall, uh, or you can just simply snap two existing points of the, mm -hmm. of the drawing. Now, because I have uh, a U shapes there and I just made a mistake, so I can just uh, uh, undo this last step. Uh, let me just discard this uh, this copy here. So I start this tool again. So it's the, uh, the this one. So I pick one point and then I zoom in here and I pick the second point. And then I need to define the, the third and the fourth uh, point. Now in case uh, this is a completely symmetrical uh, staircase, I can either refer to this point or I can just simply type the, the same length. Now it's, it's easier to refer to this uh, mm -hmm. already existing reference point. So when I click here, the software generates this uh, staircase. Now by default, the staircase uh, has uh, some specific uh, material settings, some specific uh, um, stair step number and so mm -hmm. on. So all these things are there to be customized when you select the stair and you go to the properties. You, you just select this one and you go and find all the uh, first, the ergonomic uh, standards. I mean, in the stair calculator page, these are these are all separate pages that you can uh, go through and uh, customize the staircase. The first one is the stair calculator. It is called calculator because it is not just allowing you to change the parameters, but it's actually whenever you change something, the software recalculates the whole, whole staircase. So let me show you a very very simple example. Now, one thing that is incorrect with this stair in my uh, specific case is that this stair is not tall enough. If we would make a section, we would realize that it yes. is actually only going until a specific part of this, uh, this height and it is not why covering is the not, whole. Uh, why is it not tall enough? <coughs> it's simply because the height, this is the, the, the capital H, the, the, the complete height, which you would like to kind of yes. bridge with the, uh, with the staircase, is not as the same as the floor height. Now, mm -hmm. if I just click this one, then the software considers the, the floor height. I mean, uh, it is actually just go uh, reading the information from the from the floor system. Now, let's just close this for a while and, and make it uh, easy to understand what we are actually talking about. In the software, whatever you design, you have, uh, by the way, by default, you will have four separate different floors. You can rename them, you can uh, even erase uh, floors from them, you can change their heights, but these are by default going from zero to 3,000, from 3,000 uh, 3, to 6,000 and so on. So it's like uh, three meter divisions of the 3D space by default. You can mm -hmm. change this however you wish for your comp uh, complete building. It's this kind of a standard modern building default setting. Now this is why it is important that when I design the floor with this system and then design the second floor, that there is three meter difference between the two floor levels. So I need to actually bridge those two floor levels with this, uh, with this staircase. And the easiest way is instead of remembering for a specific value, just to make the uh, staircase rem um, use this uh, staircase, I mean the, the, the floor height, and, it did, and then it recalculates the whole uh, staircase ergonomy. And sometimes when this or any of these values turn red, it means that the, um, that the ergonomic standards are um, kind of um, not, met. not met. Yeah. Now, actually, actually they're exceeding it now. The maximum value should be uh, 60. Uh, five, 64 mm -hmm. uh, centimeters, but we were actually exceeding that uh, one and a half centimeter more. And th this this is the calculation of this uh, this ergonomic standard. It's two times the height of the step and plus one one time the width of the step makes this value and then mm -hmm. the software makes, uh, uh, it is checking these values. Okay, the value is red, so does <coughs> this mean that uh, this step cannot be created? Well, no, uh, the software will, will actually create that. So as you can see, it, it even actually updated the the, the, the staircase itself uh, with the height, so it it will create a, a non-ergonomic staircase as well. And the reason to that that the software uh, allows you to even create uh, kind of surveyed uh, staircases when you you go to the spot and you actually measure uh, a staircase with sometimes even. Uh, various steps, not 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 even uh, steps. In that case, you have to reconstruct that. So the software so software will uh, tell you that it is not not ergonomic, but it won't uh, kind of bind you or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. It won't um, uh, erase the staircase or it won't correct you. It will just tell you that this is not 
uh, ergonomic. And you can decide whether this is a survey plan, so it is how it is, or you design it, so you, you use this uh, value. So in that case, if I, will, if I would like to listen to the software, because this is actually some, something that I'm designing and it is not a survey staircase, then whenever I change any of these values, the software will recalculate these um, uh, these uh, these uh, ergonomic permits like for example let's make a make a test and let's try something like for example I uh, I would like to change the the, the number of uh, steps Let, let's just change it to I don't know 19 uh, steps so I type it and I wait a little bit and then the software uh, either changes this value or it will highlight another value to to reason why it cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. The reason too why it cannot be changed is that, that actually all the sides, the back and this, this other side are locked because I actually picked those points from the drawing. So the software uh, understands that perhaps I did it because uh, I wanted mm -hmm. to have that shape. So the software locks this and some changes won't allow me to exceed these values except when I just release those values. And in that case, I will be able to, to, to make changes uh, by changing any of those values. But the, the whole point here is that whatever and whenever you change here, you need to wait uh, like one or two seconds and the software will recalculate the whole uh, staircase and then it will let you know whether this staircase is correct uh, ergonomically or not. And you can make changes and test it uh, the way you want or, or make changes as, as, as it turns out to be okay. Now, there is another important thing, especially for the, 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 the winded uh, staircase or the spiral staircase that it is important where we calculate and, and how we consider ergonomy, which is the line of ergonomy which we, ah. which we are actually walking on the stair. Now, it is natural on the, on a staircase like this not to walk close to this, this uh, mm -hmm. part of the stair, right. but tend to uh, uh, walk on the other side because it's simply it's natural and simply it's easier. So the software actually calculates the, the ergonomy on this line. If you change that line, and I don't know, let me just move it back to the, to, to the 50 percent, so the half of this staircase. Now, when I do that, the software recalculates mm -hmm. the value. Now, it cannot uh, be changed, uh, but uh, when it is changed, the software will just shift this value. I will also show this the same thing with the spiral stair. You will, you will see that it is moving and it is recalculating the value and the shape of the staircase. So this is how it goes. We will talk about the other properties, but for now it is enough. There is one another thing that I, I like to show at first, and this is because of the materials. You can customize uh, the materials as well, and those are at the support page. Now the support is the, the supporting structure of the staircase mm -hmm. itself. So this is why you can find the waste lab material here, actually. You can tell that this is, for example, something like a white material or something like that. You can change the, the, the tread, I mean, these materials here. You can also, also set up a riser board. And so, so you can actually completely build up a completely mm -hmm. different um, staircase structure. And when you hit OK, then the software makes changes with those uh, values there. Perfect. It is also good to know that whenever you design a staircase, and I will show you an example here. So whenever you design a staircase and you go to the building stair and use, for example, this, this one here, you will be able to use any of those uh, staircase uh, styles. So let's just select this one. You will see a, a tiny thumbnail here for that, for that, and for all the rest of the, uh, the staircase uh, types. Like let's just go with something like this. <coughs> I just designed the staircase like like that over here, and then the software uh, actually creates. I think that. it's just behind the corner. Yeah, it it, it creates <coughs> a very specific uh, staircase, which is sometimes used like a, as a console mm -hmm. uh, attached to the side of the building. I mean the good. walls. Uh, you mentioned something <coughs> about the uh, spiral staircases. So how do we yep. create them? Um, for that, I think I will just simply create a spiral staircase here, somewhere here, uh, where uh, the visitors of this. It, this is actually a, um, a conceptual uh, design of, um, of a library, library building. So there will be, as you saw uh, at the beginning, uh, perhaps there, there are several uh, slabs here, mm -hmm. which can be approached by using this, uh, this specific staircase, which I will talk about soon. And there is a specific uh, um, spiral staircase that leads from one floor to another up till the top. So uh, to be able to design that, I will use the, uh, the staircase tool and I will use the spiral uh, stairs. And as you can see, there is, is, there is one copy of two, similar but not not exactly the same uh, staircases here now there what is a the spiral differences? and there is a, an n spiral and there is a spiral square and there's an n spiral stair uh, now they, the difference between these two the first one 
as you might see on the tiny thumbnail here, it can be uh, a kind of an open <coughs> spiral stair, which can be a maximum of a full circle. Now the N uh, spiral can be something that is uh, starting the, the, the circle and it is going above itself. So it can be more than 360 mm -hmm. degrees. It can be more than one circle. It can be uh, actually yes, as, so as many can. as you need. I see. So that uh, one is kind of limited to only one circle and the other one can be as many as, as necessary. So I will just go with the, with a the little bit more complex one, but other than that, uh, they behave the same. Mm -hmm. So you just select the, the staircase tool and then just as in case of the other one, you will start with uh, kind of like a you know, flexible uh, uh, rubber band style of design. You just pick the first point and then you stretch it out and set up the, the, the center of this, uh, this, this yes. whole staircase. This will be the empty part. You can make it zero or you can make it as many millimeters as you want. Perhaps mm -hmm. there is a um, um, kind of a column, uh, going, column through, yes. going through there. Some so kind I of will support just, might happen. Yes, yes. So I will just uh, set it up to, I don't know, something like, a, like a, a visual value. And then I can let the software know of, of where I would like to finish designing this, uh, mm -hmm. this staircase. Now I will just make a full uh, circle and then the software starts the staircase from here with the current uh, style and it mm -hmm. starts from here, leads through uh, a full circle and finishes up, up above itself as you can see. Just above itself, so that's <coughs> a full 360 round. Yes, but I will show you that this can be actually customized. So let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. You select this staircase uh, on the 2D or either in the 3D, you go to the properties and many things are actually similar. But of course, as this is a different shape, you will see different locks here, different type of uh, settings that you can change. And if you change this, for example, to, I don't know, 390 degrees, which is more than uh, one full circle, and then you wait a little bit, and the software will create ah. a stair which is going up above itself, one or two steps. And then uh, you will see the result uh, coming here. Now I would I would like to create one with a full circle, and actually I would like to design the staircase in a in a way when I have all the steps as part of the uh, of the staircase. So this is actually a, a setting for that. It tells you that whether the last step of the staircase is the slab itself, or the last step of the staircase is still uh, contained within uh, the staircase itself. So you can change this as well. And now let's just change the, the, the width, for example, of this uh, staircase. This is also an important uh, setting. You can change it to something like 100 centimeters. Now we are actually uh, working with centimeters, but you can change this uh, as well to take um, the, the regular uh, values, I mean, the regular <coughs> unit system uh, into consideration. And also you can change this <coughs> round of uh, value to a larger or, or a smaller a value at any time and when you make the changes again you wait a little bit and then the software recalculates the whole thing now actually mm -hmm. this is uh, a logged value for the width so that's why when i change this it will reflect a change on this one if i change Definitely. this one it will reflect the change on this because, because the software has to lock this value so if i would like to design this as i don't know let's just uh, say that this is i don't know 240 uh, centimeters now, when I change it, I will see that it cannot be changed because the, the because the sum of these two values are equal to this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you make a change, wait a little bit and and reflect the changes and and see whether you you like that change uh, or not, and then you uh, change the values there and back and find whether this is the the, the proper one. Perfect. And meanwhile, we got an interesting question, and I think this would be the time to talk about it. Yep. So, how do we preset? the max riser height and minimum step width based on local building regulations. Uh, and I think that if mm -hmm. we set these things up, you can save this as an, addi an, addi an additional style to yeah, the software. Yeah, so. there is two things about that, yes. Uh, whatever I design here, I can save it into a style. We actually have the style list here. Mm -hmm. And whatever I design, I can save it here. But uh, as a staircase is something of a building part that when you design it, it always re reflects the, the, the surrounding, then it is important to be able to determine whether these rules here are something that you can change, and if so, how you can change them. Mm -hmm. So I will show this as well. So one thing is the style, the look and feel of the, yes. the staircase, and another th other thing is the, is the ergonomic standards, mm -hmm. which I think the question is about. So I will uh, talk about those values as well, what, con one co what controls these values here. But before I do that, let me just show you again this, this I talked about. If I change this to, I don't know, 50, uh, 
uh, person. As you can see, now the line of the, 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 the walk line, what we call it, mm -hmm. the walk line is, is, is moving and then the software is recalculating the, this uh, staircase uh, shape. I think a few more of the steps might be uh, better. So let's just change it. Okay, still, I need to change it. Let's say it's about 20 steps. And yeah, it's it's a bit better. So as I change it, the software recalculates the, 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 the staircase. And then now I will just lock it back to, I don't know, let's just say it's, uh, it's about 400. Um, that's, that's a little bit too much, 400 uh, degrees. And as you can see, now the software is changing the, is the economic better, stance. Yeah. So it's, it's much better. I could play with this and when I hit OK, now the software uh, drops mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this new staircase. Uh, with the empty part in, uh, inside. So about the regulations and the, the staircase standards, you can find those if you go to either the file menu and use the options, or you, you can do the same thing using this yes. wheel icon. You go to the options and uh, as I remember, it is all in the item settings and you will find something called the stair and there's mm -hmm. the stair standards. And there you can add it. All. And if, if you click here, you will be able to determine mm -hmm. whether this staircase is an institutional or, or assembly or a private or another type. When, it, when you change that, you will have different practical uh, limits and then the software will show you what is, mm -hmm. the, what is this value here. And now I, I, I also highlight that there is uh, a value that is called the headroom. We will talk about that. The software uh, is able to check whether you have enough headroom step by step and it will take this value into consideration when we, check, when we make yes. the uh, ceiling uh, above us. I think we are going to talk about that a bit uh, in, a, in a while. Yes. But for yes. now, what I'm interested in is that so far we were sketching uh, staircases from scratch, right? Yes. What happens if you have some survey data, some data based on which you have to create a 3D staircase? Now you have the mm -hmm. liberty of creating whatever you want, but what happens if you already have a drawing? Uh, well, if you already have a drawing, it's, it is kind of uh, represented here with the blue lines. Let's imagine I have an, I have an existing um, DWG file, which I loaded, and that is on, only 2D data, but I would like to turn this into a slab and this into a staircase. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of uh, kind of starting uh, a classic modeling procedure, I will use the staircase. There's a specific tool for that. But before I start doing that, I will just go and select an interior view. From here, I can see it clearly. I will actually change this to the custom staircase, which is here. And I will draft um, a slab first here. Let's just go with this mm -hmm. one. And again, just as in under, any other case, you can change the properties in other ones before you start doing that. So if I'm, if I just would like to create a, a bright white uh, stair, uh, I mean slab with uh, with with very specific um, then this is kind where of you representation. And then this is how I how I reset it. And then I when I just go and use the slab and slab by uh, slab in sketch mode tool, I go to the two D and I use the slab slab in sketch mode and I just pick the corner points, you will see a nice white slab appearing. Now I did it uh, on the on the ground floor. So the software's default setting that when you create a slab, it will be a floor, but you mm -hmm. can actually create on, on another floor uh, or you can move it to another floor. If you already designed it, it is easy to uh, select the item. Like there's the step, there's the slab and you can move it to the other floor. Uh, this will be the first level, yeah and then now the software moved it. Or you can actually make uh, one floor visible across another one uh, by just stepping to the proper floor and open up the floor list and turn on the visibility of the other one and then yes. you can use it for drafting purposes. Ah, so now you could be using the, the lines. Yes, I could, yes, yes. yes. So uh, let's just go back uh, to the first floor, I mean the ground floor, and create this, turn these lines into a staircase. Now to do that, I will use the stair tool and instead of any of these, I'm starting to use the stair by treads mm -hmm. uh, option. And this allows me to draw the step contours. But instead of kind of literally redrawing these shapes, I would like to make the software recognizing those. So I will use the internal point of chain. This is an automatic recognition tool, which allows you to click inside a closed boundary on the 2D drawing and the software recognizes that shape automatically and it brings up this dialog where you can actually design the height of the steps. Now I say, well, okay, this is cool. I think it will be fine. Mm -hmm. But even if it's not fine, later I can, I can 
make a correction to that. Now I think it's okay. So I will go 150 uh, millimeter steps one by one uh, when I design the stair, uh, staircase uh, steps here. So I just hit okay, yes, that's fine. And then I click onto the following one and the next one and the next one just and keep so on clicking, yes. An important thing here, when you do this, uh, avoid double clicking into one uh, shape. So if I would click here now, instead of having a staircase like one, two, three, there would be one, two, and the third would be on top mm -hmm. of the other one and so on. So that's obviously a wrong uh, solution. Uh, in that case, I would have to undo this uh, design and, and restart it again. But now if I'm just doing it nice and uh, fine, all the steps are uh, considered and recognized. Now I just hit enter and then another enter closes the command and it creates this uh, staircase here. Mm -hmm. Now, because I had this setting uh, for the style, which I just showed you before, with this uh, very specific console style uh, stair uh, steps, uh, I, can, I can see it as it is now, but I can also change its style. So I can go back to the properties and either going to the support and enable the waist lap, because this is how it was done, or you can change disabled. the whole style. Or I can change the whole style. I can just go back here and say it's a, it's a normal stair. The, non, the, the normal stair in our line is the default stair, which has white support, a weight slab, and all the steps on top of that. Mm -hmm. Now there is one thing which I which I just told uh, when we started this uh, this design process is, and and it is that this staircase again it it was not tall enough. I. I was wrong. Uh, 150 was not enough yes. for these numbers. So, of do you steps. have to do it again? So, I need to change the. I need to kind of consider the floor height, which mm -hmm. we already did before. So, let's just try to do that. I go back to the staircase properties. I added the uh, the properties, but there is no uh, there is no first page. Why? And it's because uh, this is a user defined stair, as you can see. The user defined stair, which was designed step by step, it is. It would be very, very difficult to 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 follow an ergonomic rule because it can be really anything. The first first step could be a circle. The second step could be a, a triangle, and so on. It is really a free tool to design turn any sort of shape into stair steps. Mm -hmm. So the software won't track the ergonomic standards in this case, but still you have the option to change the height, which is with the step geometry here. Now, it is a very cool thing to, to learn about because this allows you actually change step by step. I mean, you can, this is what I talked about. Mm -hmm. If this is a serviced stair and the first step is only, I don't know, uh, 12 and a half centimeter and the third is 13 centimeters and the mm -hmm. other one is 13.1, I can make those uh, steps as well, mm -hmm. just as I measured on the spot. But if I would like to change the whole height of this staircase, I can change this value here. Now, this is 2700. And we just learned that this project actually has 3000 millimeters for one floor height. So I just changed that to, to 3000. And when I click apply, the software recalculates all the steps. And distributes the difference among and all these And distributes the steps. them evenly. So when I click OK, now the software regenerates mm -hmm. the stairs. So now I can reach the, uh, from this floor, I can reach to the following floor with one healthy uh, staircase uh, starting from this level. Let's now talk about how we can further modify the staircases. What I'm mostly interested to see is how you can define customized steps. Maybe you have a bend or a curve over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or another interesting topic is how do you modify the 2D shapes? So these are the things that I would like to hear about when we talk about modifying the stairs. <clears throat> okay, so if you would like to do that, uh, let's talk about first the steps. Uh, we already mentioned that you can change the height of the steps. But uh, imagine a situation when you have a very specific uh, step shape, uh, which you are actually pl perhaps playing with because you are uh, mm -hmm. thinking new. about the design, or you would like to actually recreate something that you saw somewhere, or, or it, which is actually part of the design. Let's let's uh, see what we are talking about first. When you, when you click on the staircase, uh, you will be able to see uh, kind of a, a, a pop menu. I'm, I'm in a, a local menu, and this allows you to to either edit uh, the this, this staircase, um, edit the stair symbol, which we are uh, talking about soon, and edit uh, only one side uh, of the staircase. Now let's see what makes a change here. If I click on this one and I select move node, then now I can see uh, um, a new um, shape uh, dialog appearing. And as you can see, I can change somehow the shape of this mm -hmm. uh, staircase. So this allows me to, 
to make uh, such a change. If I click on this side and I say, okay, edit one side only and move this node, see what happens if I just move it here, and the software changes yeah, this uh, here yes. as well. So you can make it a curvy shape, you can uh, change mm -hmm. it the way you want, you can even uh, add an extra note here, you can change how the step goes. Mm -hmm. And obviously that will change the 3D shape of the walk ah, yes. line as well. So this is how it works with this one. And uh, let me just undo that and let's just click again here. If I just simply click on the sideline and I use the insert node, this way I can change the whole shape mm -hmm. of the staircase. So you this can is... even bend things. That, that, that's, that's very yes. convenient. Yes, now, yes. But you mentioned that this would change the 2D shape and that reminds me, how do we manually <laughs> change the 2D shape? What, what if there's something <laughs> I want to change? Maybe there are several staircases going up mm -hmm. and I want to cut the 2D in half. Yeah, which is a situation like this here. So uh, I will um, change the 3D view to the perhaps the interior sh uh, view and I just turn the camera to the side. So you can see that actually I have one staircase mm -hmm. climbing from the uh, ground floor to the first floor, but I need another one here. So what I will do, I will just select this staircase and then <coughs> I will uh, make a copy of the staircase from the ground floor to the first floor. That's fine, I already have it. But if I go to the uh, following floor, which is level um, level two, this here, uh, well, there's, a, there's an issue here. We should see the staircase because there's a hole here, but we cannot see that. And mm -hmm. it's because of the basic nature of items uh, behaving in the, in the software. When you create an item, it is hosted by uh, a level. So it is represented on that level. Uh, if you would like to, uh, make uh, a correct shape here, then you need to copy this staircase from here to the following floor. But we uh, don't copy. need a staircase over there. I mean, we don't want to show it in 3D. <coughs> yeah, we don't, we don't need that over there. But uh, it is actually something that you can easily solve because that's why the, the, actually the staircase has a setting here in the settings that allows you to go to the uh, support and disable the 3D, the 3D body, it mm -hmm. won't be created. So it will be only a 2D shape, not a, a real 3D staircase. <coughs> now this is okay. There is one another thing that I need to change because in this case, I would like to change the 2D shape as well. I don't need this uh, cut line here. And I also would like to remove half of this circle or, or the complete circle because this is not how it, is, how it is represented on this floor. So to be able to do that, let's just go first into the properties and set up how it is visible from, from this uh, level. And it is in the general properties and you can say that it is not dotted above the section line, this is a section line, but it is uh, a contour line or without a section uh, line. I, mm -hmm. This is actually what I need here and I don't need the section yes. line because I see the whole stair. So I click OK, <clears throat> that's fine. And to be able to kind of customize the 2D shape, which you can do whenever you wish, you can uh, click on the staircase and use the local, I mean the context menu and use this edit stair symbol components. This allows you to, as this uh, message describes, this allows you to treat the staircase as a staircase, but it will be um, enabled as to be a group, uh, like with any sort of other symbols, like the north symbol, the north line, which is a group of primitive items that you can edit. You can step into the group. Let's see how that goes. You can just click on this one and you can select the edit group command. And then you can, uh, you see, you are in an isolated world mm -hmm. of this group and you can only work on these parts. So when you click on this uh, uh, circle here, you can just remove that. You can customize it the way you want. And then when you are finished, you can just click on this and click on the, um, the context menu and close the group. Now, it is still a staircase. It is treated as a stair, but it is also kind of converted to the group. I see. And whenever you want, let's imagine that it was a mistake, you didn't want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> whenever you want, you can just uh, uh, click here on this little symbol and you can restore the original staircase symbol. Mm -hmm. So the, the cool thing with this, it allows you to, to make changes on the 2D shape, which would be otherwise destructive, uh, but you actually want uh, destroy the staircase. We, you, you keep this to be as a staircase still, you have the options to change the 2D shape, but without kind of exploding it, which would be the other solution uh, to solve this. Right. 
Now let's talk about after the discussing the 2D shapes is how the building elements <coughs> interact with each other and that's something that you hinted at earlier. Uh, what we would like to see is that how do you cut slabs above stairs for instance? You have the spiral staircase, yes. how do we get from the ground to the to the first floor? Yeah for now there is a there is a complete uh, completely solid uh, slab here. If I go to the uh, to the first floor i can't even see the the, the staircase shape but we discussed that we i can easily go here and turn it uh, to be visible but still i have to somehow cut this hole now for those of you who already used this the this stair uh, i mean the slab tool you know that there is a there is a, an option for the slab to cut a hole manually there to design any sort of uh, mm -hmm. um, hole inside the uh, slab but for a staircase like this there is also another kind of automatic solution if i go back to the uh, ground floor where the original staircase lies uh, you can select that and you can go to the uh, context menu and you can select the cut slabs above the stair mm -hmm. and when i do that the software automatically cuts a hole above that and this, this funny shape is there because the software actually considers the uh, shape of the staircase. So there is actually no staircase, so it, it actually just skips that part. But when I go up, upstairs, I can see this mm -hmm. is how it was, which is cool because now the software, what it does, it, it actually uh, checked what is the, uh, the headroom. Head you remember it was the setting yes. there. So the headroom is 2100. So I started climbing the stair and measuring whether the headroom is still enough. If what, the, the moment it was not enough, it started cutting the, mm -hmm. the, the slab above us. Can you manually <coughs> modify this shape? Yes, which can be still manually modified at any time. I can just go here and I can, I don't know, let's turn this into a straight edge. And let's just move this edge from here to I don't know here. So you can you can still flexibly redesign how mm -hmm. it looks like, or uh, completely um, add new nodes, curves, or any sort of other design. It it, it is there uh, to host. Um, I, mean to, I mean to provide an automatic cut, but you can manually tweak it as at any time you want. That's right. So so much about <coughs> how the slabs are being cut by the staircases. There's another interesting topic, and that is how the staircases interact with walls. Yes. There are actually two scenarios, and I think we have an example project for that. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, load it up real quick. Well, uh, for, be, before you show yeah. the other example, let me show you uh, how it works by default, because That's I, know right. the, I know the example that uh, Zoltan is willing to show is, uh, is, is kind of an, um, uh, an extra step towards what I start here. I mean, let's see that. What is the situation? The situation could be that actually the staircase, what we have here, is is having a supporting wall uh, below Happens, that yes. because they use it for storage or any any other reason. Now, when you do that, when you imagine how it was designed, and you you actually go to the any of these uh, these these walls, like for example, I just use this one as a property. I go to create similar. So I actually design a new staircase from here. Uh, let's just change it to be to oriented to the left side. I will also change the thickness of that. So I just design a wall and I change the thickness, uh, which will be, I don't know, 100 millimeters. But as you see, our biggest problem is not with the, with the width. It's, it is how it's it goes. Height. It's yeah, this is, this right. is not what I want. I want this wall to stop at the bottom of the staircase. And it is a very, very simple thing. It is automated. You can go to the uh, settings of the staircase, uh, properties, support, and that is the setting here to cut the walls. And mm -hmm. it is by default not cutting any of the walls. So I just set it up to all floors, okay, okay, cut anything that you find, and then when I reveal the 3D, now the software will solve the situation. Yes. And now you can load the, the example because the, this is one side of the story, uh, which we will repeat, repeat uh, quickly just to mm -hmm. uh, describe the. But the other whole side idea. is that what happens if you want to cut the wall above these, or you want to keep the part above and you want to cut whatever is under the staircase? Yes. And for that, I have a very mm -hmm. simple project here just to show you the two scenarios uh, with some examples and how to reach that. So this is what Ilesh was, do was doing so far. So that's, that's the result <laughs> he has reached. And that is the result that we are aiming at. And for that, I have the two examples here. I'm not going to recreate this because, because we have already that, seen. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that you can do from the properties of the staircase. Yes. So that's something that the staircase is doing. But if you want to reach <clears> this uh, result, then you have to generate that from the wall settings. And that's something that we have uh, showed a few times before that you can add um, whole frontal profile for the for the walls and that's what we are going to do we are going to go with profile and we are going to add a whole 
front profile. So I just would like to highlight that this is the this is the context menu of the wall. Yes, of the wall, not the of the staircase. That's right. So if we execute this this uh, command, what we could be doing is that now we could fine tune <coughs> the shape how this how the wall should look like. Yeah. But for for uh, for this reason, we have to sort of project the staircase's shape onto this profile mm -hmm. so as to have some kind of guide. And we can do that by clicking on the stair uh, button here among yeah. the settings. If yeah. I do that, the software tells me that. Okay, now we have to select the staircase, and the control line would be now projected onto the staircase mm -hmm. or onto the wall's uh, profile. And that's what we do by hitting OK, clicking on the staircase, okay. and here's what happens. If I put this down, I see that now I'm able to edit the wall's profile, and I have as a sort of helping guideline the uh, projected staircase uh, put onto this profile. <coughs> and now I want to track this shape over here. I could be, of course, going through and, you know, uh, trimming manually. and manually mm -hmm. tracking mm -hmm. all the staircase steps or I could go with closed loop and click into this part because then <coughs> everything uh, bounded by or circled around by lines would be recognized. It's just the same like exact uh, shape yes. recognition tool. That I and use. once I clicked uh, yeah. the shape is going to be done. So yeah. unlike the first tool when we did this under the staircase, uh, this doesn't require a rebuild of the 3D. Mm -hmm. This requires a, a shaping of the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this profile is still available so if you want to uh, keep on uh, continuing to add the profile and, and uh, edit it, then you can do that, of course. But this is the result what we were aiming at. And now we are going back to the original yes. project. And uh, now we are going to talk about uh, railings because that's something that we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. Uh, for the railing, uh, when you are willing to create a railing for the staircase, you have actually uh, two options. The first option, and we will, we will also talk about this uh, in another scenario as well, the first option, uh, one of the one of the options that you can go with, is to select the staircase and go to the staircase properties, and uh, say that you would like to change the railing settings. By default, the staircase when you design the staircase, it has no railing enabled any of of those sides. But when you go and you say, I would like to create a stair uh, uh, railing on the right hand side, which is always decided the way you walk the staircase. Mm -hmm. If you walk this this direction, right and left is going to your right and left. So this is the right side of the staircase now, and you can decide what sort of um, staircase uh, style. Um, I mean uh, railing, railing style, style yes, you would like right. to use. Uh, if I use this one, this I actually specifically created for this uh, demonstration it will create uh, a railing automatically. Now this would be nice if I could always use the automatic uh, railings, but it is not all the, all, the, all the time the case. So I will load another project to show you how you can design a, a railing mm -hmm. for yourself. But before I do that, I show you the other method how you can create uh, a railing system. One is when it is controlled by the staircase. It's, a, it's kind of like an option of the staircase. And another one is when you manually design it, you go upstairs, you make this uh, other floor visible, so you can see the contour of this edge here. So maybe you want to. So I can manually follow, around. yeah, mm -hmm. this 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 line. So in that case, I use the railing tool and I use this one. This this allows me to pick the points, and then you know uh, when I'm done, I just hit enter twice to close this command, and then the software creates this uh, railing all around. So you can decide of what sort of. Uh, uh, railing you are going with there there are um, built-in um, mm -hmm. kind of styles that you can go with and then also you can uh, create those styles on your own so to be able to demonstrate how that works let's go and see the railing properties and when I do that we will load another project and we will talk about some custom uh, customizations of the, yes. of, the, of the railing as well. Because so it, is it is interesting to talk about what makes a railing, because there are some rules and, <coughs> and general um, regulations behind it, what makes a railing come together. Uh, do you want to load up another project now? or? Yeah, uh, well, I will uh, go to the properties of, uh, of, the, of the railing first, mm -hmm. of this one, so we can see how this builds up. Uh, if I go and load the properties, I can see that whatever style I, I select from here, with a double click, it will turn this shape uh, customized to mm -hmm. this uh, to this whole uh, scenario uh, with specific rods and glazing and things like that. I can even go with this one. Uh, so whichever I like, I can say that okay, I, I I would like to go with that, and I and I just simply start using that. Now, how 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 is it uh, created in the suffering? In the suffer uh, a railing 
is built of uh, balusters or banisters, uh, new posts and handrails. And all those are those are the things that you can disable or enable mm -hmm. and then customize how it looks like. You can even create a handrail or, or, or something that is similar uh, to a handrail, which is the horizontal part of this this whole thing. If I disable that, you can see it is, is completely disappearing. Yes, so this is how it how it goes. Now, how basically uh, 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 a, um, a situation like this uh, works? Uh, now there is a handrail. I will talk about that first. Let, let me just clear clear this up up until a point where it is uh, very very simple. I will come back uh, to this uh, part and I will. Uh, um, discuss how that works and let's just go first about the let's just talk about the uh, balusters first now balusters are the vertical parts of the of this uh, railing system the balusters whenever you enable or disable them it they will be distributed based on the distribution rules that you mm -hmm. use here the uniform step means uh, the number of uh, um, Vertical poles are the most important. Mm -hmm. So the software will try to keep the distance that you that you design, but it won't be strict. You can use a fixed step. In that case, the software will create fixed steps, and if the last step is not the same, it will just kind of chop the, the, the last step. So you can go with uniform steps, you can go with fixed steps. And when you decide to go with these, you can uh, just change the, the, the center of, of spacing. As you can see, there is a tiny S here, which describes that actually you are designing this distance here. Yeah, there's the explanation for <coughs> what the letters mean. So let's say I would like to make a very, very uh, dense uh, representation of these poles. And it will be, I don't know, like 300 millimeters. And when I do that, I update that, you will see how it looks like. Now, okay, I know how it is distributed, but what makes up the shape? How it is a rectangle here, why it's not something else, like a circle or something like that? It is because you have two options. You have either a profile or you have an, uh, an object. When you go with the object option, let's discuss this first, and you go to the object selection, you reach the libraries of the software and you can even design a uh, kind of specific, uh, um, stair uh, railing systems with, uh, I don't know, kind of uh, wooden banisters or steel banisters or whatever mm -hmm. you would like to pick up. If you have something on stock in the software, you can use that. If you have something that you have just downloaded from, I don't know, 3D warehouse or some, something like that, it is an object, you can go here and you can select that. Mm -hmm. That is something that you can go with. The other one, it is a bit simpler, the profile itself. It is always a cross-section profile that you can select from the libraries. You can change the shape, you can change the, the size, and then you can change the, the, the height of this uh, baluster here. So when I change this to, well, uh, for a fact, I know that this is one meter high. Uh, so when I change this to a thousand, it will actually perfectly meet this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just simply snapping to the, to the uh, stair uh, handrail. And uh, if, I, if I change this to something like a smaller value, it is changing it uh, completely. And there is another interesting thing now. The, we just designed the primary uh, banisters. Uh, let's just change this back to how it was 1200 or something like that. And uh, there, is, there are a few other things like the intermediate banisters, the pan panels and bars. We will talk about this uh, uh, a little bit later. And the newel post. The newel post is something that is generated uh, as, as something that is appearing on the corners. Mm -hmm. We have a good example to that. We will show, show yes. that in the, in the last section, session. With the panels. Uh, with the panels, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so this is also something good to know. And the, the other one is the handrail. So basically we have vertical parts and we have horizontal parts banisters or baluster, balusters and handrails. When I go to the handrail settings, this is where I started uh, with, I have also a rectangular uh, cross-section, which I can change to something else. And here, I think it is wise to talk about also the reference points. Now, when I zoom in here, as you can see now, this cross-section is halfway into mm -hmm. this other one. And the reason to that is because it is told the software to uh, stretch, I mean, sweep this profile with its center point. If I would like to align it with its bottom point, I can do that and then now it is uh, differently mm -hmm. um, represented. I can also add a new uh, railing and in this case it, will, it won't really be a railing, it will be just a horizontal uh, part that I'm willing to design here. I can, I can, I will also change the height, let's just uh, turn it to, to uh, like 800 millimeters. 
and I can also change the cross section. Now, in this case, the cross section will be something a like a, one, yes. Let's go with the circle. I think uh, I just saw a nice circle somewhere here, like it's, it's there, and I will change it to I don't know, like twenty millimeters uh, only, so it's, it will be a very narrow one. And then I go with a, a, a instead yeah, the of material beach. Material setting should be different. So. Instead of beach, I go with chrome or, or something like that, and it, it will be uh, represented differently. Uh, and I can uh, change its, uh, its 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 offset. Now, what is an offset? And in this in this case, the software actually drafted this uh, along the the center line, a symmetrical center line of this whole uh, stair uh, railing. But if I use an offset, let's just change this to let's let's change it to I don't know like fifty. See, it is moving to the, the side. Way. If I use a negative value, it is shifted to the other side. So you can actually move it horizontally as well, not just vertically. Vertically, you move it like this, and horizontally, you can just uh, shift it uh, to the right or to the left. And if you would like to make it completely symmetrical, you just use a value of of zero. So this is actually basically how you build up. Uh, a new style. Uh, now, what I would suggest to any any of you that instead of starting completely something from scratch, find something that is close to mm -hmm. your needs and customize it or add parts, which will be always uh, faster than you know start for anything from scratch, which you can of course uh, at any time do. And later on, <coughs> you can save this into a customized style. If you yes. Want. Yeah, so if I would like to save this, I can click here and I can save it uh, into something like uh, let's say it webinar. Um, style and then I can decide whether I would like to make this available on all in all the projects on this computer or only on this project and when I hit OK the software creates that. This is actually how I did this other one and, and the, this, this one here with the little human uh, mm -hmm. figure here. So this is kind of the, the anatomy of the basics of how you can create a railing and how you can draw the railing because there was two methods. One is uh, driven by the stair and one is kind of a manual uh, method. And uh, let's see this, uh, how it is in action uh, in another project. I have another project for this reason, and this is this one, uh, which is actually kind of, this is an external uh, example, but the rules and the, the whole thing, how it goes, it is the same all around. So let's see how it looks like. This is, this is it. Let's just remove this from here. And actually, I have this... Um, this railing, which is not saved into a style, so this is what I where, where I will start off. When I, I just designed a, a, um, a railing, which I would like to reveal how it was designed, mm -hmm. and then we will save it yes. as a new style. Yes, because you told us that you are going to use a vertical and horizontal parts, but here <laughs> we see rectangular panels, so how do yes. you get them together? Yes, uh, in case of a, a, a baluster, as, as you can see, this is not, not uh, enabled. I mean, the baluster itself mm -hmm. is not enabled. But in case of a banister, you can, you can enable an object. So this could be an object, but there is an issue with that. If this would be an object, then I couldn't do something like this. I just use uh, the Create Similar tool and I design um, railing from, let's go from this point to this point and until this point. Yeah. So I have this. Uh, I need to change the height of this node, so I click here and I click on the uh, endpoint, which I can do with any of these uh, points, and I can use the elevate or you know I can just move it down downwards to change the, the height of this uh, node. So when I click, now the software, as you can see, it aligns the, the panels. It is not just simply mm -hmm. putting rect rectangles there, which would be weird in this case, but it's actually, it, it knows that it must be mm -hmm. kind of you know skewed uh, in a way it, it, as it yes. is now. So how it goes, um, if I go to the properties of this, I can reveal it easily. It is something that we use um, as the panels and bars. Now the panels and bars, as you can see, when I click through all of these, those are added in a panels and bars designer tool. And I added a frame with these settings, gaps on the sides, the height of the frame, the material, the base offset, how it is designed, and also I, I designed the whole height and width and thickness and the, and the cross section, so the software knew how it is drafted. So I could use the add frame, add bar, add object tools to add these kind of tiny connection bars, these here. And also I added a new object. I, this, is, this is just a panel. It is just a, 
a, a, a rectangular panel for the for the glazing but this could be really anything it could be kind of a carved uh, surface or something like that so now the software understands that when I choose these panels and bars option that I, it is enabled there uh, when I choose that the software will use this uh, mm -hmm. as a setting for this and then it understands that how, how what sort of rules uh, change uh, are changing this, uh, this this railing when you change the size of it I mean the, the path of it Interestingly, there's an extra distribution uh, or an extra panel uh, here in the middle. So yes. how do you get rid of that? Yes, actually this is what happened also here. I already fixed that. To, so to demonstrate how that goes, you can when you select a, a railing, you will see these tiny um, icons at the center of these kind of fields. This is one field, this is another field. Now, these are the sections of the, the, the railings. One section is from node to node, and another section is from node to node. When I click here, uh, I can edit only this part of the, as you can mm -hmm. see, this is part number one out of two. So when I go here and I disable this balusters by big steps, let's just disable that. See, this is what happens. Now the software removed that, um, this kind of secondary sub sub distribution uh, between the between the two poles. And then when I hit okay, and the software removes that from, head, from there. So I can, mm -hmm manually uh, customize only parts when I click on that part uh, represented by this icon. Uh, let's <laughs> talk about some more editing tools. And there's a special scenario when you have, for instance, just one solitary handrail uh, running along a wall. How do you yeah. do that? Yeah, well, that is, uh, talking about that, we already actually kind of covered that. When you go uh, and select the staircase, whatever you already have, you design the staircase, <clears> and uh, you know that these parts are not necessary. You would like to create one with only the handrail. Mm -hmm. I also disable the, uh, this one here, and let's just say I, I don't want to uh, create the panels and, and, and bars, so I just completely erase these things from here. Okay, I just completely get removed this one, this one, this one as well, and I just uh, fully regenerate the whole, whole uh, system. Mm -hmm. So I only have the handrail. So I can <coughs> save this as kind of a stair well um, handrail, kind of yes, handrail or something like that. So I can do that, and then from this point on, I can use this in uh, closed stairwells as well. Yes. I think the last uh, last thing that we should be showing is that we have a few examples of further rating styles uh, yep. as, as images and also as a project file, just to show you that how these two tools can be used because obviously we call them railings and we have our own ideas in terms of how to use it yep. but if you understand the un the ideas behind it then you can create things like that now let's just quickly get a glance through how these things are created the one in the middle that's pretty straightforward we yep. have uh, big new, new newel settings. posts and we have smaller balustrades yeah so the newel post is this one with mm -hmm. a specific height of two meters and we have we we, we have this um, this this primary register setting, and we also have this. Well, we actually don't don't have the primary. Yes. This, is, this is disabled. We have the balusters by big steps, and this mm -hmm. is a wooden pole uh, here all around, and it is only one meter. And we have a handrail kind of grid. Uh, mm -hmm. With one handrail at the top, which with a very specific cross section. So if and I zoom a few in, wires, uh, you can just, see. Behind, just below. And we it. have the circular cross section wires uh, up from uh, the bottom to the top, ten centimeters each. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is we, we we saved it as an Australian type because we actually had a photograph of that, how it was uh, looking like, and a photograph took in Australia yes. at the porch of the building. Uh, so we will show you how what was the basic idea when we mm -hmm. decided uh, to to create this one. So this is how it goes. So when we have something like this, and we edit this one, like let's just imagine I I make a new breakpoint here, add it to the center, for example, uh, to here. And in the case, automatically the software creates a new pulse because there is a break in the. I just did. I just added yes. a node into the into the <clears throat> this section, so the software understands that that is a break. So I need to create a new pulse. This is the basic rule. If you look at this <clears throat> example next to it, uh, this is special because it has three different kinds of vertical parts. Yeah. It's got the primary balusters, which yes. are the smaller ones between we, handrail we, Which handrail. we, if I disable, you can yeah. see that these are the, the very dense ones. Yes, yeah. I think we should, you should disable that so that we can, we can yeah. see what's going on. The second set of vertical parts are the newel posts. The newel posts, yeah. It's, it's in the yes. kind of corners, yeah. 
and the balusters by big steps are the third ones. So yeah. using these three options, you can set up an intricate style of, uh, of rating system. Yeah. So that way you can create things which are a bit more special. Uh, we did not add um, customized materials to this, but you can add, obviously, for every single element, you can have a different material. Yes, and actually the difference between this and this is that here actually we edited um, right. one part. We, we made a change for this, this uh, specific session. Exactly. And then let's just see the the samples, right? We have yes, these, we have a few uh, images for that, just to illustrate that yeah, what we want to this one. I think this was the first one uh, as an idea. So as you can see, we have kind of new posts. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we have the ones with the big steps. We have these yeah. uh, these uh, regular distribution. These are the the, the common mm -hmm. ones, and then we have these these ones at the at the new post. Exactly. And there's another one which is kind of similar, uh, but with a different style, different material settings, and different distribution. But it is actually mm -hmm. kind of similar. And this is this kind is of an the example room. of what happens if you add uh, objects to it. So instead of because for these examples that we just created, we were using profiles which were you know extruded, but instead you can use ready-made objects from the library, just like Ilish explained yeah. it. Yeah. And there's so a, there's, I think there's a third, uh, yeah, and that was yeah, the first was example the, that with we the wire. showed with the wires. Yeah. So this actually concludes our general uh, ideas and tips on how to work with uh, staircases and railings and how to create shapes like the ones you have seen uh, during this show. If you like this, today's show, then uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you would never miss a show like this one. Thank you for the question. Yes. Should you have anything forgotten or you had no chance to ask because you missed this show? Uh, and you see it uh, and in the evening or something, yes. then just type us an email and, and, and ask a question and we are more That's than right. happy to help you to, to find the answer. Thank you very much for your attention. Until next time, it was Lotan and Ilesh with Arschlein. Bye-bye.